I'm gonna do one more shift, maybe. I should be able to get through one more, maybe even two. Um, what's the other thing that I want to say about gambling? It'll come to me, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Betting, that's the other thing I was going to say. When, when you are drunk, money just doesn't seem like money anymore. Especially when it's not in the form of money and they're just like chips. Love you, Dad. It's just something to play with at that point. Um, that was another reason that I stopped gambling is when I was first becoming a dealer um, and going to other casinos just to hang out with my coworkers because you become friends with your fellow dealers and then you go to other casinos because that's what you want to do, that's what all your life is, um, you start to really lose the value of money and just like lose sight of how how much like $20 is worth, how much $100 is worth. Are we starting with it? Alright. Be behind the door? Hmm. Interesting. And then you have your friends that get you on to bet more. Yeah, definitely that kind of stuff happens. Um, so after being, after the pandemic happened and being where we couldn't go to casinos or do that stuff anymore, it, it just like really hit me how much I started devaluing money because they were just play chips, you know? <laughs> There was a point where, when I was playing poker, let's see these names, Alexa, Dominic, and ooh, you again. Uh, so I don't know if you play poker at all, but there's like max buy-ins that you can do at a 1-2 table or a 2-5 table. And usually at a 1-2 table, your average buy-in is like $200 just to sit at the table. And, um, so, <laughs> when I would go to purchase anything, I would just be like, oh, well, it's like one buy-in for one, two, no, like, it's not that much money. When in reality, $200 is a lot of money. So. See, I've never... I think Blackjack and Roulette are great games for people to start with because uh, it's it's not too intensive. Um, but I never played Baccarat. And I know it's just as easy as Blackjack is to learn. But 1, 0, 4, 3, 4, 4. Um, I just never got into playing it. Just like Craps. Like, I know Craps is not easy to play at all. 1, 0... I think I got that backwards now. I didn't. Okay. At least I can keep track of things. I think what I see the most at the casino when it comes to people spending more money than they intended to is definitely when they come in with their friends and their friends are egging them on to bet more and <laughs> do crazy things. And then not even their friends, but like people that they meet at the table and they start getting friendly with them and then they just start egging them on to do things and it's just like, oh, goodness. Or <laughs> the other dealers egging them on. To be like, oh yeah, you should definitely double down on your 12. On a dealer's 10. Great idea. Everything's in the same spot. Did I shut off the randomization? Maybe I shut that off. Or because I got possessed right way too quickly. It just. Hello? Hello. Rebecca? I reset it. Rebecca! What the? <laughs> I'm 
I'm assuming that's one of one of the side bets. Uh, oh, I gotta put this away. Get a little distracted, I guess. Did I not grab it off the printer? Man, am I on a roll. I didn't print it out, did I? Oh, goodness. I am so great. Right arm. Yeah, yeah. We just got that bed in, so we used to have... Can I... I need to restart this, because I am already going to go insane since I'm not submitting this thing. So our side bets used to be um, Lucky Ladies, which was... Right shoulder, right arm. Oh. I'm an idiot. Lucky Ladies, which was any 20, but the, the best one to get was um, two Queen of Hearts. And then there was a perfect pair, which is... There we go. Suited Trips pays out 100 to 1. Shit. That seems about right. But anyway, the new ones that we just got in are the trifecta bonus, which is kind of like that, where it's a it's a poker hand, um, so you can get trips, flush, straight, straight flush. But they all pay the same on our tables because somebody messed up the belts when they went to printing. <laughs> so when they get that fixed, trips should be somewhere from like. 40 to 1 or 30 to 1, depending on what they're going to put it at. But I could see how suited trips would be way more. Um. Right now, everything pays 9 to 1 on the trifecta bonus for the different straight, straight, flush trips and um, there we go. Flush. Which is beneficial for the straights and the flushes, because usually you right. only get like three to one or five to one for those different ones. Um, but the amount of times that I've dealt out trips in a straight flush is ridiculous. And just thinking about the money that those players could have, could have been making is crazy. Um, do do do. that you go and uh, gamble with them, you have to like take three months off before you can go out and gamble again. It's usually a bad sign. I already have one of those. happens all the time. You see people come in and spend so much money and go to the ATM so many times and then you don't see them for months afterwards. It's like, oh, where have you been? They're like, I had to recover from what you did to me. It's like, well, you did it to yourself, but I will take half the blame. You did this to you! wasn't me. Where's the symbol? Is it on the coffee pot? It's on the floor. Hmm. Do 
not know. We get another wedding trip. Again. Oh my god, I know. The amount of times in the old days. <laughs> Where you just wake up and you're like, oh god, please. Please let me have not brought my debit card with me. And then you look at your account and you're like, yep, I brought my debit, uh, debit card with me. The last time I played poker, that happened. <laughs> it was... Uh, it's been a while. Rebecca. Rebecca. Yes. Yes, father. He's in the... In the hallway? No. Uh-uh. Trying to think the last time that I won. Has to be over a year now. Um, so what made me get into it, it was I was waitressing in a in a hotel bar and connected to the hotel bar was a mini casino. And I would always go in and serve them because a lot of the other waitresses just didn't like the atmosphere so I got into doing that and then I met somebody and they were like well why don't you just become because it was mostly a poker room and they were like well, why don't you just become a poker dealer instead because it's like lazy waitressing you just sit there you pitch cards to people and you make tips just like you would serving drinks and I was like okay let me try it out and I ended up loving it um, just being able to interact with people and for the most part in poker you don't usually have the people getting mad at you as much as table games but <gasps> like I said unfortunately the new room I am in is mostly Will you help me? table games and not poker so yeah I mean I've been doing it for this long and I'm probably going to do it for a lot more years because it's just easy and it's fun and like I have a degree in biology and I could be doing that, I could be working in a lab, but it's just, I like having the connections with people and just being able to play games all day pretty much and it kind of gets my gambling habit out because <laughs> I gamble through proxy kind of. I guess I'm watching them gamble and they're like, yeah, I don't need to, I don't need to lose money. But then it's super exciting when you have those people who win big and they're just grateful and good time. Then you get your regulars, just like if you're a bartender, you have your regulars who come in and right. you get to talk to them and you talk to them about their life, their kids, and it's just fun. It's kind of what got me into wanting to stream more is it's kind of, kind of similar. Um, I needed a hobby to do outside of work, and I think streaming is just a way where I can just connect with people and play games and do the same fun thing and have conversations and hopefully have those regular people that come in and we can just talk. It's outside of work, besides out with my boyfriend I really wasn't doing much with my time something that was you know I don't want to say worthwhile but I just wasn't doing anything that I could put my mind to or be productive in a way so I started doing this and I think I'm gonna start doing digital art again because I did art a lot growing up and I just stopped. She just gets so caught up in life. Oh, what is this? Interesting. Okay, I'll have to come back to that. Oh yeah, I I understand that. Like it's so hard to find time to stream between working and just life in general but honestly I only do one one day a week to start and I feel like that's enough as long as you can 
have a committed day to doing it. Um, I think if you would have to change, if you have a job where you have to change the day and time all the time, it might be a little difficult to get into streaming again. Um, but if you can have one consistent day that you just wait for three hours. Okay. I have confidence that you'd be able to do it. And I've learned it doesn't even matter what time of day. What? People make up stories. Death is a scary thing to a lot of people. No one's involving any ghost bodies or whatever. I'm just hoping I wouldn't get that cutscene today. Just because I hate editing it out for YouTube. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you just have any random three hours that is a consistent three hours that you can stream. I don't think it's a bad place to start. It's where it's what I've been doing. It's what I've been starting with, and I've gained uh, a bunch of followers from it, and it's been fun. Um, I get a look at him. <laughs> and even if it's hours in your local area where you don't think anybody would be able to watch, like you will start getting friends from other other parts of the country like when during the pandemic um i was able to stream at different times a day but then i got back into a job where i was only able to stream at like because i was working the grave shift it was only like four in the morning or something so there was like barely anybody watching in the u.s but there was a bunch of people i don't i don't even remember where it was but they were tuning in from a different country and i was like oh well Yeah, that would be kind of hard if if it's that kind of schedule. The only thing you could possibly do is on two weeks on and one week off. Yeah. One. Oh, I already logged into that. <laughs> you get distracted. The other thing you can do is keep. Uh, I don't know how much you would want to do this, but maybe start a TikTok and just keep viewership alive that way. Like keep in touch with people that way and just do week long streams. And then those streams, I don't know if you have a PC or something, but edit them and put up videos on YouTube. I don't know. There's just a bunch of different things you could do. It does take a lot of time and effort and the want to do it though so but again if you just start it and see where it goes doesn't hurt doesn't hurt worst that can happen is you do it for a couple months and then take a couple months off and come back and <laughs> some people will still come back Nothing's really been happening in this run, and I've also been going super slow. Because I have been going slow. It's just like, okay, we need to tone it down. She has not been able to do anything. But also, that's just my little advice, and it probably doesn't mean anything. <laughs> because, like I said, I haven't there been doing go. this for very long. And it might not work. And I might just be talking out my butthole. Alright. But, I've noticed people have come back to my stream and watch, and we have fun together, so. Like most things in life. It doesn't hurt to try. And also, if it doesn't make you happy, don't do it. That is probably my biggest life's motto, is if it doesn't make me happy, I'm just not gonna do it. 
because life is far too short. You can try out a bunch of things, but you don't have to continue doing them if you don't like them. Just like I said with um, why I, I deal and I don't use my degree is because as much as I liked doing it, um, as much as research was fun to me, it wasn't something that I wanted to do for the rest of eternity, staring at a wall or staring at a computer <laughs> doing research rather than playing games. Life advice with Jessica. Don't do things that don't make you happy. Like, the things have exploded, but I haven't been able to find them. Like, there was one in the bathroom over here, or one in the doorway. Couldn't find it. Is it on Jesus? It's not on Jesus. It's not on this door. And there was another one I couldn't find. What's this? Business cards. Okay. So I'm just not going to find out what demon it is. Because I can't find any sigils. Unless they're so tiny, are they on the outside? Let's see why they put it on the outside. I already have one of those. Yeah. There you get the goo. Alright, let's see. What is what is happening? What is happening with you, my guy? move my my trach around my protractor I cannot move it did I well that's annoying let's let's grab one of these I don't know maybe did I mess my game up by going so slow? Doesn't want to give me anything anymore. I don't even remember where the first one exploded. It was over here somewhere. And I still wasn't able to find where it was. Is it in these drawers? It wouldn't be these drawers because these are too far away. Oh. It'd be helpful if I looked through stuff. It in this drawer over here? I don't think so, because this is where all the, uh, all that stuff is. These sigils are very hard to find this time around. Maybe we should go out and start this over again. Let's, uh, let's do that. We're gonna go, we're gonna exit this, and we're gonna start a new shift, because for some reason, that one's just not going how it should go. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to be right back. I just have to use the little potty. And I'll be right back. Oh, um, did I? I don't know if I fixed that one, so I'm just... You're just going to hang out like this for now. <laughs>